So for those of you who don't know me, hello, my name is Whitney. Good morning, and thank you for coming. Oh, okay, so I was supposed to say, so I'm a Southern American. I'm sorry, I'm going to need a lot more good morning than that. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So one, that was done because today is a really interactive conference. I'm going to be pulling you all throughout the day, so we might as well just start it now, right? Yeah. <laughs> so first and foremost, Odyssey Taiwan was very honored with its ability to host and organize APAC this year. We want to thank everybody for being in this room. We want to continue to have a great day of positivity and engagement. I've said this multiple times, you hear the theme. We are very blessed to have international speakers today. I will fully admit that I'm taking baby steps to learning Mandarin and Taiwanese, but it's international speakers. There will be an equal opportunity and equity of me mispronouncing everyone's names throughout the day, so don't worry. Good, you're smiling. That means you get my humor that we're going to do today. This conference was the braiding of government, academia, and business. We know that when we talk about research, particularly medical research, that'll make a difference in the lives of individual people. There has to be a strong core and effectiveness that only comes from braiding human innovation, economic resources, infrastructure, and passion to move the field forward. So thank you for everyone who is doing this work and continues to do this work. We have a whole bunch of speakers. I'm gonna start with opening ceremony. I'm gonna ask that you please hold your applause to the end. I know that they will stir you up, but we're gonna keep on time. So first I would like to invite Dr. Chuang, who is the Deputy Director General of Taiwan Centers for Disease Control. He is a shining example of right place, right person, right time. His... <laughs> His background of medicine, biotech, and public health really is why Taiwan did so well during COVID. So please come up to this stage and I will turn it over to you. Uh, Dr. Zheng Yuchen, Dr. Ming Hui Xu, and Dr. Joshi Risa. Hello. <laughs> uh, distinguished guests, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Xu for inviting me to participate in this uh, Odyssey Symposium. And I also want to express my great, sincere gratitude and welcome all of you from uh, every worldwide uh, Odyssey community to Taipei, Taiwan to participate in the third Odyssey uh, Asia-Pacific Symposium. This is also the first time the Odyssey Taiwan chapter hosting the conference uh, in here. I therefore uh, sincerely hope that we will be able to find more important and uh, potential topics to work on with the Odyssey partner after this conference. Dr. Xu is the founding President of RC Taiwan. I'd like to congratulate uh, Dr. Xu on building a strong RC research network in Taiwan. To produce real world evidence from real world data is a very important biomedical issue. However, there are many barriers, uh, including restricted access and uh, linkage of real world data and a lack of uh, universally accepted uh, methodological research, uh, methodological appro approaches. The mission of the Odyssey uh, is to improve health by empowering, uh, by empowering community to collaboratively uh, generate the evidence, uh, promoting better health decision and better cares. The Odyssey has established uh, an international network of researchers and observational health database. Uh, Dr. Rizak has uh, devoted himself to the uh, Odyssey community and published many uh, 
article with RSE collaboration. What I have learned from the RSC is that this community is open to every individual and provides many uh, efficient, uh, efficient tools, updated guidance, and, and, uh, and uh, active, powerful, and influential network to help researcher and clinician uh, to collaborate with each other. I'd like to congratulate Dr. Risa on the analysis uh, achievement accomplished under his excellent leadership. By the way, I also like to congratulate Dr. Risa on receiving the Morris Collin Award at the AMIA 2022 uh, symp annual symposium last week. Meanwhile, as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to spread globally, we will keep on strengthening cooperation with all of you to secure health for all. Thank you. Next, we'll hear, re oh, sorry. Next, we'll hear remarks from Dr. Chen. He's the Vice President of Taiwan Medical University. His strong dedication to public service can easily be linked to his history of working with the military. He's an expert in neuroanatomy, nervous system biomarkers, and so much more. Um, as a student here, I can say that his passion for innovation and technology has propelled TMU to be a powerhouse that continues to grow and climb in the international community. So please welcome him to the stage. Our uh, government representative, uh, Dr. Zhuang, uh, is uh, Center for Disease Control Deputy, Con uh, De Deputy Director General. And distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, Taipei Medical University and welcome to uh, 2020 uh, Odyssey Apex Symposium. I would like to uh, express my uh, sincere gratitude uh, to all the speakers and the uh, uh, participant to join uh, this important symposium. And, and some uh, participants are online, I know. We, we all know the uh, Odyssey covers uh, 330 locations across uh, 74 countries and leading the charge for standardization to national hospital clinical data is very, very important and for uh, analysis application of a healthcare database to improve the quality of medical care. As a result, the huge community has fostered innovation, uh, international partnership and develop, uh, development by sharing results and effective method, evidence, informatic, inf informed practice. So uh, I'm very uh, proud to introduce that in 2019, here in Taipei Medical University, um, we have launched the first Office of Data Science in Taiwan's universities. And uh, since then, uh, we have success uh, you know, to organize Odyssey Taiwan this year, March. And now we have collaborated uh, with many, so many hospitals around the world, uh, simply because we have standardized our data according to this common data uh, so uh, uh, today, the symposium just uh, marks uh, our hope to further uh, promote Odyssey Taiwan and foster a multinational research collaboration that ultimately will enhance the health information technology and patient care. Lastly, but not the least, I would like to thank Odyssey uh, Taiwan and TMU Office of Data Science, especially uh, TMU Office of uh, Human Research for uh, organizing this symposium. I wish the great success of this symposium and wish everybody health. Thank you. Last but not least, joining us virtually will be Dr. George Herbscott. He is a legend, and it is perfectly fine if you all have fanboy and fangirl moments. We all should, right? <laughs> um, he has a long history of developing 
implementing and studying informative practices that have truly moved the field forward with over 250 publications, so many titles that it would take all day for me to list, but I will choose two. One of them is as the current chair for Health and Human Services, um, one of the US Health Administration's Sorry, platforms, and the second, it's already been mentioned, but we're gonna say it again and do a round of applause, is winning this year's Morris Collins Lifetime Achievement Award. So please. He sent a video, but also will be joining us virtually. <laughs> at the Asia Pacific Symposium set in Taipei. Um, my name is George Hripsack, and I'm gonna be giving a state of the global community uh, Odyssey is an open science community, and we always reiterate our mission, which is to improve health by empowering a community to collaboratively generate the evidence that promotes better health decisions and better care. Odyssey's values are innovation, reproducibility, community, collaboration, openness, and beneficence. Odyssey works this way. The community generates, um, uh, through collaboration, data standards, tools and methods to carry out observational research. It has a large data network where each member of the network keeps data locally, converts it to the common data model. And when we carry out a study, we distribute the uh, questions around the world. Uh, sites voluntarily run those studies, send the results back centrally where they're interpreted uh, collaboratively and published. Our collaborators have grown. We now have over 3,000 collaborators as measured on our team's environment from 80 different countries. Our common data model is widespread and our vocabulary has over 10 million terms with 80 million relationships. Our Odyssey data network has grown. We now have 453 data sources, which contains uh, health records from 928 million unique patients from around the world, or over 12% of the world's population now encoded in Odyssey. And the Asia Pacific portion of the Odyssey network contributes 93 of those databases, so a large fraction of it. Odyssey runs via its work groups, um, 27 of them shown here where we carry out our mission. And the Odyssey regional chapters uh, many of them from Asia Pacific, China, Japan, Taiwan, Singapore, Korea, Australia, and our most recent edition, India. Odyssey has been publishing very strongly and including with help from Asia Pacific. Uh, the important thing in this diagram is how tightly packed it is. And you see people uh, from all around the world, including Asia Pacific, in that central knot where people are both contributing evidence, doing clinical work, and doing methodologic work. And that's one of the successes of Odyssey, tying together its infrastructure and its evidence generation. We have almost 500 publications so far from our community. Paul Nagy has put together a community dashboard shown here that tracks our progress in, in publication. And note not only our cumulative uh, number of publications and their citation, but also the number of authors is over a thousand. I looked at 80 publications that Odyssey generated between January and September of 2022. I did it as a strict hierarchy, so there's open for uh, interpretation, but no matter how you cut it, we're getting close to 50% of it being clinical, that is evidence generation. Now remember when Odyssey started, we were mainly building infrastructure with our uh, vision to eventually be producing evidence. And now we've gotten there with half our studies. We have a strong COVID uh, contribution, as you can see, due to our work in 2020 and 2021. The purple uh, pie slice of the common data model includes um, the standard and the data network, often by outside researchers considering the common data model. Our method slice includes tools, analysis, and phenotyping, and prediction, while small, is growing. Uh, let me note that 17% of the data network uh, publications are by Asia Pacific, and 48%, a huge slice of our non-COVID clinical studies are by Asia Pacific. You could view Odyssey as, a, as, a, as an initiative to produce reliable evidence, and this is our framework for producing that evidence. 
And we do it through following 10 legend principles, which are shown here. I won't go through them, but instead what I'll do is go through some of the evidence that we've generated using these principles. Legend hypertension, that's the first area where we started with publications now in Jamia, Lancet, JAMA, JAMA Internal Medicine, hypertension, and so on. I note uh, the strong contribution of Asia Pacific shown here with this study um, on first line beta blocker monotherapy. And this most recent study uh, on analysis of dual combination therapies in the treatment of hypertension. Again, this one contributed by uh, an Asia Pacific network study. Odyssey builds reliable evidence by engineering um, open science systems that build trust. And we spent the 2022 Global Symposium just uh, last month uh, presenting uh, this new framework to the audience. It has a strong focus on diagnostics and our need to be very explicit to prove that we're producing reliable evidence. Asia Pacific uh, in 2022 set out uh, with an agenda with four uh, types of studies, uh, characterization of non-communicable communicable diseases pre and post COVID, uh, healthcare resource utilization around COVID-19, uh, real world safety around multiple sclerosis, and work on the Odyssey uh, Asia Pacific uh, data network. One of the important uh, success factors for Odyssey is leadership. Leadership is the foundation of any initiative. And Odyssey has been hugely successful. Um, a successful group seems to lead itself. Odyssey encourages leadership rather than bosses where leaders inspire, set examples, and give credit. We pull from a diverse group from around the world, um, from many fields, and from many career stages. Now, over the recent years, we've shifted our work from being behind closed doors to occurring in work groups to open our transparency. And we've been holding uh, leadership summits and workshops to help our leaders. And let me emphasize that we're looking to find and grow our leadership, especially junior leadership in our initiatives. So let that be encouragement for everyone attending today's symposium. Uh, that's a view of leaders within Odyssey. You can look, also look at Odyssey as being a leader. Odyssey is already known for its common data model, OMOP, and we're trying to build our reputation for generating reliable evidence. We want to be producing the best evidence. And the way I put it is we want to pull the medical field to being more rigorous. I use the word pull. In English, often you say, I'm going to push the field forward, but you push away from yourself and you pull towards yourself. And so the way I see it, Odyssey should pull the medical field towards itself, setting the standard for rig rigorous research from a methodology point of view, but also producing reliable evidence. And for those of you who are new to Odyssey, uh, here's how you can get involved. Uh, we have our Odyssey forums. Uh, we have our work groups and teams environment that we'd like you to join. Uh, we have our uh, community calls. Of course, we have our Western Hemisphere call every week, and we have our biweekly APAC community calls to accommodate the multiple time zones. Uh, we also have our educational materials, uh, which includes recordings, including recording of the uh, Western Hemisphere's call and our Eden Academy. Uh, so we look forward to many of you joining our journey. Now, Odyssey um, generates three kinds of evidence. On the, in the orange is uh, clinical characterizations. That's counting, uh, tallying how often things happen. On the right in dark blue is uh, population level effect estimation or causal inference, testing hypotheses, the stuff that you usually publish. And on the left, uh, lower left in lighter blue is patient level prediction uh, that is uh, predicting what patients, what specific patients will have as an effect due to a drug. And after our symposium, just a couple of weeks ago on the community call, Patrick Ryan and I outlined several areas that we think Odyssey should focus on going forward. One of them is called HowOften.org. This is a facility that was previously available that we shut down because we hadn't maintained it, which is to take every um, drug in the world, every possible side effect uh, in the human body, 
and tally the incidence rate of the side effect. Now, this is a non-causal assessment. So it simply says, how often does, every, does each side effect happen in the context of beginning to take a drug? We really want the causal inference perhaps, but this one is feasible to do for every drug and every side effect. And we're looking at now in the last two years because of COVID, we learned an enormous amount about incidence rates. We want to take that new knowledge about incidence, incidence rates, reinvigorate uh, this study using across our entire network, hoping that Asia Pacific uh, participates. So we'll be moving forward on this one. As I implied, we want to move forward to causality. So that would be uh, the safety of interventions, real world evidence network or SIREN, that is taking as many phenotypes as we can and as many drugs as we can and doing the true estimation of the safety. Um, that involves both work in methodology, in phenotyping, invigorating our data network and displaying those results to clinicians who need it and policymakers. <clears throat> now that's safety, which is a little bit easier for effectiveness of drugs it often gets more complicated. We need to know do subgroup analysis. In other words, I can give a drug, I can say the average rate to which it works, but does it work in diabetes patients? Does it work in heart failure patients? Does it work equally well in the young and old? And so that's our uh, study where we wanna march through medicine. We've already done hypertension. We're currently working on type two diabetes. We've had smaller studies in many areas, and we wanna continue to go large scale um, generating evidence, uh, population level estimation uh, across medicine. Fourth idea is what will happen, happen to me that is predictive modeling. Uh, Odyssey has been working on predictive methods and being very strong in producing reliable evidence. As you may know, uh, medicine produces many predictive models nowadays and only a tiny fraction of them ever get used. And one reason is lack of reliability. And we are working in Odyssey on producing reliable predictive models. Now, our evidence generation relies on foundational pillars, standardized vocabularies, standardized data network, and standardized open source tools. So we look forward in the next year and years to come to working on them. One is standardized vocabularies. We have many needs for vocabularies and we've been maintaining our core vocabulary centrally but we believe it's time for the uh, Odyssey community to contribute to this, to open up our vocabulary and provide open methods for uh, members of the community to um, make suggestions on what we should work on, to actually do the work. Uh, and then when they add things to test them, um, to add to the growth of our vocabulary so we can expand to new areas without having such a central uh, uh, burden. Second is the standardized data network. Uh, we've had our network, as I showed earlier, it's growing enormously. Um, but we, what we'd like to do is work further on data quality and, and relevance. So in other words, to create a catalog of all our data sources, to do um, an unbiased assessment of the data quality in each of those data sources, and also have a way to indicate what kinds of data uh, studies would be relevant to those data sources. And in that way, being able to more efficiently pick out data sources that would be relevant for a given study. The third pillar is standardized open source tools, and we've been working on this through Hades. And in the last year, we've been uh, had a number of uh, venues. We've been working to bring the community together to expand the group of people who work on our open source tools so we can continue to grow our methods and tools. I want to again thank you for inviting me and I'm thrilled to be able to present uh, the global Odyssey community. Thank you. Next, we're going to have a series of photos that will be interactive. I've said today will be highly interactive. I'm just going to explain the photo. Actually, I'm sorry, pause. Can we have a round of applause for all of our speakers for the opening ceremony? Thank you, thank you. 
for these photos, there's going to, oh, there we go. Sorry, I was waiting. I don't need to, we'll talk. Hello, Josh. If you speak to the mic, can you hear us, Josh? Good evening, Josh. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear. Yeah, we can hear you, Josh. We can hear you. Hi. I just wanted to say hello. I wanted to say, first of all, it's an honor to be asked to give the State of the Odyssey Global Community, and on behalf of Odyssey, I wanted to say thank you to our hosts, Odyssey Taiwan. TMU and everyone in Odyssey APAC who contributed to the uh, program today. I am so, so sorry I could not come. There was an injury in my family and they're getting better, but I couldn't be so far away yet. But I want to thank, I'm so sorry to miss my friends and colleagues, Dr. Jin Sheng Shuang, Dr. Chen, Dr. Li. And thank you, Dr. Shi. I want to just take this opportunity to say how proud I am of Dr. Jen Chang Chuang. For an advisor, uh, it's a wonderful situation when the student flips the situation. In other words, when the student becomes the elder and Dr. Chuang's position at CDC and his important work um, you know, is an example of that. I very much miss coming to visit, but I also miss coming to Taipei. Dr. Chuang invited me to Taipei several years ago in addition to meeting all the medical centers in TMU, Academia Seneca, National Palace Museum, um, when I came to Taipei, it felt very much like New York City. It felt like my home. And so I'm very sorry not to be there. Uh, but I just want to say thank you to Odyssey APAC and recognize all the hard work and wish you all a very good day at the symposium. George, I'm Brian, and there are about five years uh, since last week I visited New York, and I'm, I'm missing you, and it's sorry and you, you cannot come here, and if you can come here, we can eat together. Okay, thank you. <laughs> The people would like to make to him really quickly another congratulations on his Lifetime Achievement Award. Yay! From APAC Odyssey. So, even though he cannot be here in person, we are going to have him commiserate it with us by doing our group photo first with him virtually a part of this photo. So, the group photo will take place in three phases. The first one can be your serious pose if you like. If you need something to do with your hands, a thumbs up is always great, right? The second one, smiling faces. It's okay if you take off your mask, if you feel comfortable for all of these photos. I will start by taking off mine to elicit trust, right? And then the third one, we have groups of, I'm sorry, we have fun signs that will be placed throughout the room from our various organizers, sponsors, and just as a warm welcome to Taipei. So if everybody can, no, no, I'm serious. Everybody can start to get to where they will be able to see in the photo. We want to make sure that everybody is in the photo. Um, we will get started with our photos. So big smiles for those of us who felt comfortable taking off our masks. 
was about to say, I think some of the sponsors may want to grab their signs. So first one, we're going to do a thumbs up. Next one, it's just going to be a smile. And then the third one will be fun signs, OK? Is everybody where they will be seen? Can you see, if you cannot see yourself on the screen, we cannot see you in the photo. It makes it real simple. OK, on the count of three, one, two, three, first photo. And by first, I mean more than one. Second set of photos, big smiles, big smiles. If you, thank you. One, two, three, big smiles. Third one, fun photos. You can do the kissy fingers. You can do thumbs up, cute eyes, make it fun and interactive. Thank you. One, two, three. Thank you all for participating in our photo portion of today. This, <laughs> this will not be our only photo portion of today. Actually, later today, for those of you who were here yesterday, you know we have a really cool signage behind the projector. Sorry, give me a second as I put back on my mask. Actually, if you come see me during the breaks, have a sign up so that special teams, if you're here from a university, if you're working on collaboratory research across borders, right, you all can take your photos together later today. That'll be during the, um, the um, after the end of the conference. Now we're gonna do a couple more photo sessions. For those of you who are not invited to do those photo sessions, I want you to pay attention so that you know what you wanna do for later, okay? So first, I would like to invite all of our government officials, anyone wearing a red lantern, of course, our team from Team U, please, please come up to the stage and let's knock out some photos for publicity, but also to show that we put on an amazing conference. For those of you that are attending virtually, you are not safe from me picking on you and having you engage in today. We would really like you to comment, be keyboard warriors, Send in your comments. Please send me information about what your projects are. Later today, for everyone in the audience, there will be a speed information event where we get to meet each other. We get to find out what research we're doing. You all might want to get up top too. It's okay. Where we will get to meet each other. You got. You got to get. Please. So I will be tapping people throughout the day to find out what your interests are, what you would like to learn while you're here, but then also what you're looking for. Because if we're talking about collaboratory research, it's about finding out what pieces we're missing so that we can make introductions with people. Okay. This one. Okay. And then now we're going to do the photo where everyone does a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Middle camera, thumbs up. <laughs> You're gonna do, well, sorry, last photo, make sure that we have. <laughs> Look, okay, so we're all in research, so we know that funding is important. Photos are important for our funders, but also to make sure that we show appreciation. We want to make sure that we get them with their signs. What's the second? Can you? Thank you. For those of you that I've seen taking photos of yourselves and selfies throughout the day, please, 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 if you're doing it on social media or if you're at home, <laughs> we're using the hashtag 2022 Odyssey APAC. So if you're posting to social media, that hashtag is going to be 2022 Odyssey APAC. That way we can share and experience with each other when we get home and see all the additional photos. <laughs>